You ain't got to worry about your enemies because God's going to take them out. Hallelujah. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Somebody tell your neighbor, he's going to stay with you. God's going to stay with you. He's going to be with you. Don't matter what you're going through. He's going to be right there. He's going to be with you. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Here it is, verse 6. This is what I want to preach to you. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. And then repetition, verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, meaning the word of God, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left. Don't go to other philosophies. Don't go to other philosophies. Don't go to other religions. Don't that tie into what I was saying earlier. Don't do syncretism. Don't mix and mingle things. No, stay right in this book. Why? That thou mayest prosper. Somebody shout, he wants you to prosper. Wherever you go. Meaning as long as you stay with God and in his book, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be like Daniel in the lion's den, but you'll turn that lion into a mattress and a pillow if you would just learn to obey what God says. You could be like the three Hebrew boys in the fire, but he'll make you fireproof. Matter of fact, he'll get into the fire with you. Ain't that what the book of Daniel said? He said, I threw three in, but it looks like I see four. And that fourth one looks like who? The son of God. He will get in the fire with you if you do what? Stay with him and stay in the word. He'll prosper you wherever you're at. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt do what? Meditate. Meditate. What does that mean? Rehearse and nurse. Meditate on this word. You got to meditate therein day and night that thou mayst do what? Observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make. Do you see this repetition? That's when you shall make your way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Meditate on the word day and night so you can observe it. You can't observe it if you don't meditate on it. Meaning you can't follow it if you don't meditate on it. You could quote Facebook and you could quote TikToks but can you quote the word? And when you quote the word, can you live what you quote? Yeah. You got to meditate on it. All right. I done broke down all the verses, so I don't got to preach them. I'm only going to preach two points to you. The points I want to preach about is be strong and courageous. Look at your neighbor. Help me announce my text. Say, neighbor, yeah. this page of this chapter demands emotional obedience. Amen. You may be seated. You can take your seats. Emotional obedience. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you even now for this word that you are speaking to us. For thy word have we hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Let your word be strong within us. I pray even now that you anoint this word to break, to shatter, and to destroy every yoke of emotional bondage that would try to keep us from being able to have the courage and the strength that's necessary to move forward into all that you have and want for us. Have your divine way right now, and we'll give you praise for the promises that you bring in the past. In Jesus' name, so much shout amen. amen. And amen. Emotional obedience. Our text today comes from the book of Joshua, and as I told you last week, this book describes the conquest of the land of Canaan under the leadership of Joshua, who is the successor of Moses. Now, what's important to understand is that this particular conquest of trying to go into Canaan only happens because God made a promise to Israel concerning the land. Um, specifically, it's God who spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, verse 7 um, and 8, saying, I will establish my covenant um, between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you, the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, I will be their 
God. Understand that although this promise coming to pass in the life of Abraham, um, descendant was many years later after bondage in Egyptian land and wilderness wandering, the promise still came to pass. And the promise still came to pass because God keeps his promises. Somebody shout, God keeps his promises. Understand that there's no promise that God will make to you that he will not keep. And this is important to reinforce today because sometimes we forget that God is a promise keeper. Understand that God is not the type to say something in deceit to you. We have some people that will say things to you, but they never intend to keep what they say. But that's not how God functions when he speaks to his people. Whatever he says, he intends to do. Um, he doesn't speak a word to not fulfill it. Uh, one portion of scripture says that God is not a man that he should lie. Um, neither is God the son of man that he must repent. But if God said it, scripture says, Roland, that he will make it good. Um, he doesn't make covenants to us to not keep them, but rather God is truth. He doesn't just operate in truth, but he himself is is truth and he fulfills what he says however if we can be honest um, there are moments in our lives where as we believe concerning a promise and we believe concerning a covenant but we don't see that promise actually come to pass um, hence this morning I asked myself a question and that question was what happens when I'm living but not seeing the promise come to pass uh, what happens when I'm doing but I don't see the promise come to pass what happens when I am believing but I don't see the promise come to pass um, as I begin to ask that question to myself God dropped three reasons into my spirit so I want to explore these reasons as to why this may be so um, the first is could it be that it's not time yet see sometimes a promise not coming to pass isn't that it won't come to pass but rather that it's not time yet and what you must note is that God doesn't produce premature promises again God does not produce premature promises whatever it is that he has spoken it will happen at a set time for it um consider what psalm says psalm chapter 1 verse 1 through 3 it says blessed is the man that walketh what not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of the sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful but then it goes further in verse 2 to say what but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law does he do what meditate day and night and then it goes further and says and he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water not just anybody not just non-believers not just inconsistent folk but the people that meditate on the law both day and night those people shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water why does God plant the tree by the water so that the tree can get all that's necessary in order to grow in order to blossom or rather in in order to produce fruit so the scripture goes further and says that bringeth forth his fruit in his season scripture says his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper uh, notice the scripture says in his season a uh, meaning that the tree does not produce its fruit outside of the season in which it is supposed to produce um, which then means that as long as that person is blessed of the Lord the tree will produce that's assigned to that person's life or rather the promise will happen at the time that God has eternally designated it so it's not that you won't get married but rather it just might be not time yet it's not that you won't get the position it just might not be time yet it's not that you won't move to another location because you're tired of where you're at but rather it just not be, might not be time yet and this might be a tough one for some of us but it's not that God is not going to heal you it just might not be time yet um saints we got to get to the place that we recognize that God orchestrates the fulfillment of his promise in your life at appointed times so the first reason could be that it's not time yet somebody shout not time 
The second is, second reason is, could it be that God never made you that promise in the first place? And this one is tough for some of us because, you see, we want certain things and we, we require and we desire certain things. But I need you to understand that it is possible to want something so bad and then you ascribe it to yourself as a promise with the expectation that God will do it simply because you want it and when we do that what we begin to do is we start holding God accountable for things that he never said and even further we begin to feel falsely justified in being upset when it doesn't happen for us but as the believer it's important to recognize that we cannot force God into promises we cannot request things of God um, and then say if you don't do it then that mean you lied understand that you can make request but you cannot demand that he fulfills it um, even the Bible tells you in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 about requests God says to be careful for nothing or rather be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving here it is let your request be made known unto God so we are told to make our request and make it known to God but understand that God choosing to grant that request doesn't make the request a promise he is not obligated to grant you what you want and that's important to note because the reality is that sometimes your request might be contrary to the divine will of God and God will not grant you something that disrupts the ultimate plan and purpose for your life that's why sometimes the person that you want to be in a relationship you can't be with them it's not that God wants you lonely but rather God is not trying to mess up your future so God will block you from some people People and he'll block you from some things in order to secure your destiny. So again, the question concerning unfulfilled promises could be, did he make it in the first place? And the third reason that you may not be seeing a promise come to pass is because something that you might be doing is disrupting that promise um, hence you got to ask yourself could it be that the word or the instructions that you need to know and you need to follow relative to the promise is the very thing that you are not following um, could it be that God has given you specific instructions that you are negating because you either think that there's a better way or you discount the instructions because you don't always find relevance in them pertaining to what it is that you've been promised. Understand that Joshua and the Israelites were on a mission to the promise. Um, they were promised the land of Canaan. However, the set Israelites that God had that was walking with Moses were not allowed by God to possess the promise. And the first set of Israelites, the reason why they couldn't possess it is because they lacked loyalty. Um, the first set of Israelites, they could not possess the promise because they were constantly complaining after God delivered them from Egypt, they didn't have praise, they had complaint. God delivered them from tyranny, and instead of them saying, thank you, God, for bringing me out, they said, God, why do you have us in the wilderness? We could have done better back there in Egypt land while in bondage than being out here in the wilderness. Don't that sound like some of us? We want God to do something. We're tired of the hard task. We're tired of the struggles. We're tired of the issues. But then when God brings you out, you're upset with where it is that he has you so now you start wanting what you were delivered from instead of saying God whatever you want to do in my life I'm okay with it and we turn into how the Israelites function whereas we start to complain all the time instead of just accepting and worshiping God based on what it is that he has done and that's what the Israelites did here and because they did that the Bible lets us know that they now became disqualified from entering into the promise. However, I need you to understand that Joshua and this new breed of Israelites were successful in destroying the Canaanites and making it into the promise because they did not act 
like their ancestors, but rather what they did was they actually took God at his word. And please note that when you take God at his word, that does not mean that you're just hearing a prophecy or hearing a promise and believing, but rather alongside your belief of the word and your belief of the promise, there has to be a following of that word that you say you believe in, meaning that you have to align yourself with that word and walk in the truth of it. See, some of you, it's not that you struggle with belief, you struggle with following. You say that since he made the promise, I could just keep on doing what I want to do and God would just produce in my life what he says. But understand that there is partnership that's required with this promise. Um, you have to partner with God, meaning you have to come into alignment with his word and follow what God is saying so that you can be a recipient of the promise that he made. Which then means that although the time you're in right now is called my chapter of success you control the narrative based on your obedience to God's word let me say that again you are in a chapter called success but you are the one that controls the narrative concerning this chapter based on your obedience to the word of God and the truth be told just because this sermon series is labeled chapter of success does not mean that you haven't been in a chapter of success multiple times before this moment but rather the problem is why you were not always able to see the success that God designated for your chapter is that while you were in the chapter you kept missing the mark concerning obedience and understand that obedience is not always about just moving when God says to move or about just giving what God says to give because some of you have mastered the art of making certain moves and some of us have mastered the art of giving um, because we're, we're okay with that level but rather this afternoon what God illuminated my mind concerning is emotional obedience that's attached with the promise that he made and that's what I want to preach to you today you must recognize that there is an emotional obedience that's attached to your success I need you to check out what was said in verse 3 through 5 God lays out the promise that he wants to give to Joshua and the Israelites. He says, every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I've given it to you. Just as I spoke to Moses, from the wilderness to this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, all of the land of the Hittites, places that other people already have, God says, I'll give that to you. As far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun, I will make it your territory, meaning that there is nothing that you can't have because I have promised it to you because I am with you the same way I was with Moses I am with you the same way I was with Abraham I am with you and he says that I won't fail you and I will not forsake you but then we find a shift happens when we get to verse 6 and verse 7 because God shifts from the promise to saying these words be strong and of a good courage God shifts from now laying out the promise to telling us that we have to remain strong and remain courageous. Now, why would God tell Joshua to be strong and courageous if he's already made a promise? Why would God tell him that there's a matter in which he has to be emotionally if the promise is already secure? Um, saints, I would like to submit to you that the promise will still come with some battles. Um, the promise that God has declared in and over your life will still come with a few wars and there's still moments that you gotta fight your way through in order to get what it is that he said. Um, just because it's promised doesn't mean that you won't have a few battles in order to obtain it. Um, just because it's a promise doesn't mean that you won't have to fight. Hence God telling you beforehand that it's a promise is so that you are aware of the fact that he has eternally guaranteed it to you. However, that guarantee is so long as you move toward the promise in the manner in which I prescribe um, which means that when the promise he guarantees is delayed and disrupted it's not because you can't get it but rather I need you to understand that there has to be some self searching to find out what about myself or what about my behavior or my mindset or even my emotional state is delayed 
delaying, disrupting, and even disqualifying me from receiving what God has promised. You can even compare old Israel to Joshua's Israel. Moses' generation couldn't possess the promise because of their mindset. Um, and their mindset is what messed up their emotions. Um, they complained and they was always upset. And they were never satisfied. God fed them with food from heaven. He literally dropped down manna from heaven every single day he provided for them and them folks couldn't even be happy with the manna that God gave and now they wanted something else to eat so now God gives them quail and they have meat to eat now and they still were not satisfied and because they were not satisfied God decided to cut them off from the promise after giving them many chances to get it right but then we find that it wasn't just the children of Israel that was cut off but then Moses got cut off from the promise as well and somebody might be asking if Moses was the leader then how in the world did he get cut off Moses got cut off because he became affected within his mindset and his emotional state so much so by what the people were saying and what the people were doing that he began to move in disobedience to God out of his anger of the people. Numbers chapter 20 verse 10 through 13 says and Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock because they needed water and Moses said to them listen you rebels shall we bring forth water for you out of this rock and then Moses lifted up his hand and he struck the rock twice with his rod and water came forth abundantly from the rock and the congregation of Israel was able to drink of that water but understand that God never told Moses to hit the rock in order to get water but God told Moses to speak to the rock and water would come out but because he was so emotionally frustrated with the people he moved against God now somebody might say but God still blessed him don't you know that sometimes God will still send a blessing in the midst of your disobedience but that disobedience doesn't mean that you haven't been cut off from the promise and that's what happens right here in the text the Bible says in the next verse but the Lord said to Moses and Aaron because you have not believed me to treat me as holy in the sight of the Son of Israel therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land in which I have given them isn't that such a tragedy to do all of this work to make it all the way out of Egypt to survive Pharaoh throwing babies into the water to move into the place of promise and to now get cut off from the promise because he could not control his own emotions that some of y'all right now in the building you're getting cut off from things because you're allowing the disobedience and the disgruntled people around you to affect your mindset and now you are making wrong decisions when you are really close to your promise saints understand that Moses was the leader but he was infected in his emotional state and he moved in disobedience and let me pause right here parenthetically and I want to tell all the leaders in the house um, that you have to be careful to not let the people that you lead to cause you to react in sin and I'm just talking about leaders in the church house I'm talking about wherever you're a leader at in your life uh, meaning that if you are a parent in this building parents you got to be careful to not allow what your children children are doing to cause you to react to them in sin some of y'all are cussing your children out or you're giving them consequences that don't fit the crime because you are so frustrated with what it is that you are doing and what you don't realize is that you are allowing the emotional state of your children and their mindset to cause you to move in sin toward them you cannot react sinfully because someone around you has frustration 
demonstrate it to you. Church leaders, you cannot react sinfully because someone around you has frustrated you. If you are a supervisor on your job, you can't get even with your subordinates just because they are not doing what's right understand that there is a God above you and he is holding you accountable concerning your emotional state somebody look at your neighbor and say you gotta be careful I'm almost done. But understand that there is an emotional responsibility concerning your promise. Uh, somebody wake your neighbor up. I know it's a long sermon, but I'm about to wrap it up. Uh, and say, neighbor, you are responsible uh, concerning your emotions. Uh, you have an emotional responsibility uh, relative to your promise. Uh, meaning that you cannot let your emotions uh, get in the way. Uh, God told Joshua uh, to be strong and to be courageous. Uh, somebody look at your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, you gotta be strong uh, and you gotta be courageous. Uh, understand that hardships will come in your life, uh, but your courage cannot waver uh, just because you got some struggle. Uh, understand that problems will happen in your life. Uh, every day will not be sunshine, uh, but sometimes you gotta walk through the storm but you gotta have the capability of saying though there's a storm around me I will learn how to dance in the rain because I will not allow my circumstance to dictate to my emotions because God has made me a promise and when God makes you a promise your circumstance was calculated into the promise equation how dare you act huh, like your problems caught God off guard. Huh? Don't you understand that before God made you a promise, huh, he knew you would have a problem. Huh? Before God made you a promise, huh, he knew your daddy would act crazy. Huh? Before God made you a promise, huh, he knew that your spouse would not act right. Huh? Before God made you a promise, huh, he knew sometimes you'll be broke. Huh? Before God made you a promise, huh, he knew that you will get sick in your body so how dare you respond to the promise out of fear of the circumstance knowing that there's a God who looked beyond the circumstance and made you a promise anyway somebody lean on your neighbor and say neighbor you gotta keep your emotions together you gotta make sure that your emotions stay intact or rather in light of this sermon you have to have emotional obedience uh, and this is where I want to ascend uh, because psychology says uh, that it's not possible uh, to completely eliminate your emotions uh, but rather we must understand that we can learn to manage them uh, through a process called emotional self-regulation uh, and this involves taking actions uh, that can alter the intensity of an emotional experience uh, such as influence your emotions uh, to be one way or the other uh, however I find in this text uh, that God does not use psychology uh, just to say to regulate your emotions uh, but rather what God says in this text uh, is that I know you feel one type of way uh, but I've given you the power to choose to be the opposite uh, of what it is that you are feeling uh, somebody grab your neighbor uh, and say neighbor, oh neighbor you got the power of the Holy Ghost which means that you can choose to be the opposite of what it is that you feel I know that you feel depressed but you got the power to speak over yourself and say I refuse to live in depression don't need no pill but I can tell myself to be strong and to be
be courageous because the power of El Shaddai lives on the inside of you. And my Bible tells me that greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. And that's why when there's trouble all around you, the Bible says that he'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. You can't psychologize your way into that type of peace, but rather that type of peace comes to the power of you saying, if he made me a promise that I'm going to walk in the instructions of my Savior, somebody grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, choose to be opposite of what you feel, choose to be opposite of your anger, choose to be opposite of your jealousy, choose to be opposite of your meanness, choose to be opposite of a revengeful nature, choose to be opposite of being bitter, choose to be opposite of being unforgiving, you gotta choose to be opposite, but now that I'm telling you that you gotta be opposite, the question becomes, how is that choice possible, and how is that choice effective, when I'm in the circumstance that I and well, scripture goes on to tell us that the reason why you become enabled to choose what's opposite is because there is an obedience to the word of God, which means that when I meditate on God's word, I become power packed with the glory of God to be able to make an emotional choice beyond what my circumstance demands which means that through the word of God I can have emotional regulation and through the word of God I can stabilize myself in strength and courage for the Bible says that in my weakness that his strength is made perfect but how can you see the perfecting of his strength without a word in your heart that's why the Bible says the word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against him somebody grab your neighbor and say neighbor hide his word in your heart but when you hide his word in your heart then you can walk in emotional obedience come on let's try grab your neighbor and say neighbor this chapter demands obedience in your emotion stop giving in to your sadness stop giving in to a spirit of isolation stop giving in to your bitterness stop giving in to fear for God has not given you a spirit of fear but of love and of power and of a sound mind grab your neighbor and say my mind will be sound my mind will be at peace my mind will be at ease problems to the right fire on the left trouble behind you trouble in the front of you but I'm not looking to my right and I'm not looking to the left I'm not looking behind me and I'm not looking in front of me but I look to the hills from which coming all my help but my my help comes from the Lord my help comes from the car but my 
salvation that the Bible says that God will be the saving strength of his anointed. Grab your neighbor, say neighbor, obey God, stabilize your mind, stabilize your emotions, walk in the joy of the law for the joy of the law will be your strength tell your neighbor you need strength for this promise you need strength for this promise you need strength you need strength for this promise you need Touch somebody. Yeah. It's a straight for the promise. Straight for the journey. Straight. Oh boy. Straight. To be straight for this promise. Hallelujah. Emotional obedience. Hallelujah. Somebody tell God glory. Emotional obedience. The devil wants you to be unstable emotionally. The devil wants you to flip and flop based on how you feel. But somebody shout, I'm not a flipper nor a flopper. Come on, y'all ain't saying it. I'm not a flipper nor a flopper. The Bible says that those that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. We're like a mountain. Mountains don't move. The wind blows hard. It'll knock down this church. It'll topple a building. But I've never heard of a wind shifting a mountain. You have to build yourself up and recognize that God wants you to get the promise. And if you are emotionally driven, how are you going to drive out the Canaanites? If you are emotionally driven, how are you going to take possession of something that's already in somebody else's name? If you're emotionally driven, every time you hear something contrary to what you believe, you give up hope. The Bible says be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. You know they're not giving out loans right now for businesses. That's all right. God is my source. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But your credit ain't right. You're going to need a cosigner. God is my cosigner. And he'll send somebody if that's what he declares that I need. And I'll get whatever's necessary to establish what God said. But you don't make enough to get a new apartment. God is my source. He'll shift my name to the top. Give me favor and make people manipulate systems on my behalf. Don't tell me what God can't do. All I got to do is be strong and courageous and watch this. Let me tie it into last week and move into it. Be strong, courageous, and move into it. I didn't ask for your fear. I didn't ask for your opinion. I just asked for your obedience. Be strong. Be courageous. Stabilize your emotions and move into what God said. <sighs> things, and I feel the prophetic here, things are about to start moving very fast in your life. Things are about to start moving very fast. You didn't think you was gonna have that place yet. Things about to move fast. You didn't think you was gonna get promoted. Things about to move fast. You ain't think you was gonna be back in school. Things about to move fast. You ain't think you was gonna be in ministry that quick. Things are gonna move fast. Which means that you gotta emotionally stabilize yourself that as God begins to shift you, you are not shifted by what you see. 
this point in scripture, Joshua is on the other side of the Jordan. By the time we start moving a few chapters in, he's leading the people over the Jordan. They're crossing the water because now they're going to the promise. By the time we get another chapter over, they're already at the promise, but the promise is fortified with somebody in it that doesn't belong to them because God has already guaranteed it to them. God's dropping instructions on them and things are happening quickly. You don't have time to waste dealing with people that don't understand your promise. Some of you, and I'm done right here, some of us are connected with people that are reinforcing, watch this, old Israel mentality. And now they're pushing you into a place of being disqualified from what God put your name on. Because misery loves company. They see you go. They see you getting closer. They see you pushing forward. They see you changing. They see you trying to get it. And sometimes you don't even recognize the seeds of demise that they are planting in your life. On Monday, we was praying. I said, Lord, increase our discernment. Some stuff you will not detect by their words because their words are sweet. You got to have a spirit of a discernment to be able to know in what spirit are they coming into your life. Are they coming to help you build or are they coming to disrupt? God wants you to make it. He wants you to gain. He wants you to have. Don't you ever think anything differently. He wants you to make it. The promise is here. It's here. You now are responsible to do what's necessary in order to possess it. Lift your hands in a comfortable position. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you right now for this moment that we are here in your temple and that we are able to receive your word and recognize that there's an increased demand of our meditation on scripture so that we, God, can remain positioned to receive all that you have. So have your way in us. Disrupt the things that try to disrupt us and help us to become stable in our emotions so we can see the dream all the way through, so we can see the promise all the way through, so we can see the function all the way through. We don't wanna miss anything, Lord. We don't wanna miss it because family is annoying us. We don't wanna miss it because we're frustrated on the job. We don't wanna miss it because the work is too much. So God, help us to be stable, help us to be strong, and help us to be courageous. Can y'all just say that? Help me to be strong and help me be courageous. In Jesus' name, somebody give God praise. We're going home. home. Is there anybody in the building that's not saved, that you have not accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? We'll do communion next Sunday. Who has not accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? Now is the time for you to come to Christ. Come on, come on up here. Come on. Come, come on, somebody give God praise. Is there anybody else? Come on, man, this your thing. Is there anybody else? Anybody else want to come commit yourself to Christ? Now is the time. Come run to this altar. Run to this altar. Run to this altar. Run to this altar. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. Hallelujah. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. 
This is your moment. is open. You're not too young to come. Hallelujah. You're not too old to come. The altar is open for you to commit yourself to Christ. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship right here. We're going home but there's a sweet spirit in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anybody just excited? Hallelujah. Obedience starts here. Obedience starts now. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He makes all things new. Glory. Let's worship our way home. Come on, give it to him. Hallelujah. I know it was a long service, but God is good. God is good. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stand to your feet. We're going home. I'm going to ask one more time, though. Is there anybody else who wants to come to this altar right here and commit yourself to the Lord? There's a promise for you. There's a promise for you. The first promise is salvation. And everything else is connected to the fact that you are his and he is yours. Hallelujah. And he wants us as we are. And he will continually mold and make us into everything that he has predestined for us to be. Through our trust and obedience. Somebody shall just be obedient. Jesus name Lord we thank you so I just tell God thank you as we go thank you Lord Lord we thank you hallelujah hallelujah so Lord we pray in the name of Jesus that you bless this house bless these your people cover these people right now cover every person every baby cover every person in this room and their families shield and protect us allow us to continually grow in the grace of your word hallelujah allow us to grow in the grace of your word in the name of jesus bless us with your power bless us with your spirit hallelujah hallelujah y'all just help me pray right here real quick lay your hands on lord touch her right now touch sister cassie and touch the baby that's within her right now in the name of jesus Lord, we pray right now against anything that disrupts development. Yes. I thank you even now, Father, and I declare the health of this child, and I declare the health of this mother in the name of Jesus. Have your divine way right now. Bind up the hand of the enemy, and we declare no disruption. In the name of Jesus, let your health be upon her and upon this child in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, Lord, as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, Lord, encamp your angels round about us. In the name of Jesus, take us to our various homes and destinations safely. And when we get there, let us find that all is well. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. And amen. God bless you. Hug your neighbors. Tell them you love them.